Hey guys, so the shop is a mess as usual, but as you can see, we got some square tubing. I'm super, super excited. This is three quarter inch and a half inch square tubing. We're gonna be building the floor for the bug. So I'm super excited. I've got kind of a rough plan in my head. Um, I'm going to just kind of start measuring, cutting and tacking everything and just build it out best I can and then we'll weld it all out later. But yeah, super excited to get the floor in the bug. So let's just jump into it. Alrighty guys, so I got this 3 16 inch uh, flat stock. I ended up hammering it into hoops for my trans tunnel. Um, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but it should work great. So we just got it all tacked onto the square tubing right now. I'm about to go through and weld it all out. Um, and then we'll just cover that in sheet metal down the road and that'll be our trans tunnel. So don't have a crazy amount of foot room, but we didn't last time either. So uh, it should work. Yeah, um, I didn't want to show you guys the whole process of measuring, cutting, hammering, uh, measuring, rehammering, and a bunch of stuff. It just isn't really fun to show that kind of stuff. So that's what I just did. And then uh, now we are going to move on to fixing this torsion bar cross member. And then uh, we will move on to fuel cell mount. So I guess let's jump onto that. Alrighty guys, so as soon as I uh, let the car down and it sat under its own weight on the suspension, it bent the heck <laughs> out of the cross member, which isn't too surprising. So I need to pull that off again real quick and straighten it out. And then what we're going to end up doing is ditching these uh, soft mounts, these flexible mounts, and we're going to weld the bar from the bottom of the frame across the torsion bar cross member to the other side of the frame.
right, guys, I am super, super stoked on how it came out. Um, let me get a good angle here. We got the torsion bar cross member all built. We just welded angle iron from frame rail to frame rail and along the bottom of the torsion bar cross member where we had to notch it out for the T case, as you can see. And uh, it looks really good. I don't see any flexing. The car is sitting on its own suspension. You can see it's on the ground. The uh, lift arms are not underneath it. And yeah, I am extremely satisfied with it. Uh, let me just show you a little bit. It's moving up and down. So we got front suspension officially. The car is sitting on its own front suspension. Super stoked. Um, I talked to a company here in town that does leaf springs and talked to them and got a plan together for my rear leafs. So I know I originally talked a lot about going four link. That's been the plan. I have a four link kit in the garage right now, but it's not a good one. It's a cheap eBay one and uh, it doesn't have a lot of adjustability. It's just not a great four link kit. So I weighed my options. Money is a big factor in it. I could weld that four link kit in with the help of my buddy um, and have an okay four link kit and get the cheapest possible coilovers I could get my hands on at all uh, off eBay because I can't really afford anything. Um, I could get the cheapest coilovers and maybe have an okay rear suspension, not much adjustability and really crappy coilovers, but have it four linked. Or what I can do is get custom leafs made with the right spring rate. Um, and then I can get some decent shock absorbers and use my four link bars that I have and make traction bars out of them. So that's the plan because it's gonna be about half the cost. And I think a better suspension for the money. And then later on, if we don't like it, if we wanna to upgrade to a real four link kit with adjustable bars and a bunch of goodness, we'll do that. But for now, we're gonna go with four link, er, we're gonna go with leaf springs with uh, some decent rear shocks and some traction bars. So I'm pretty excited. We're getting really, really close, guys. Um, yeah. So next, I need to finish on the floor, do a lot more on it. You can see I made those hoops um, for the trans tunnel. They're not very uniform, they're not very pretty. I had to hand bend them, but they'll get the job done. And then we got that bar right there for my main uh, seat mount, which I'm going to weld a couple more bars in there and we're gonna get the seat mounted to the cage too. So should be super good. Um, yeah, I am. Just gonna keep on keeping on. I think now I'm going to start on my uh, my fuel cell mounting because the fuel cell has to go there. There is no other place for a 20 gallon fuel cell. I don't wanna run a smaller fuel cell because this is a street car. It was a street car, it'll continue to be a street car. And I want to be able to, if I need to, drive it to Vegas for racing. Um, I obviously will probably trailer it a lot of the time, but I want to do drag and drive events someday. I want to do street car things. This is a street legal car, <laughs> kind of allegedly, um, that I would drive out to car meets and like, it's a street car. I've always built it for that. So I don't want to go with a smaller tank, like a five or 10 gallon fuel cell, um, just because I won't have much range on that. It just won't be very practical. Whereas a 20 gallon cell is going to get me more weight over the rear axle and obviously a lot more range. So the fuel cell can only go in that little spot, which now has a bunch of bars and stuff in the way. So we're gonna work on the fuel cell mount and uh, see how it looks, how it comes out and see how we can mount it without it being in the way of the rear suspension. Cause that pumpkin is obviously going to travel up when the suspension compresses. And I don't want the top of that differential hitting the bottom of my fuel cell, but uh, we're gonna mount it off this cross member. I was originally gonna cut this cross member out and do a custom one, but it I've already cut out so much of the uh, cross beams, like the torsion bar uh, support right there in front of the torsion bars. I cut that out. I've already cut a lot out, and so I figure I would, and I'm gonna be removing that back one. So I figure I would just leave this factory bar in there because it's a good stout support between the frame rails. But let's jump into fuel cell mounting and uh, see what kind of junk we can come up with and get some stuff welded in and go from there.
Alrighty guys, so I did a little modification to the floor and I replaced the bar that was right there with just strap steel um, because it is non-structural. It's just gonna have some sheet metal over it. I'm going to weld a bar in between there and there, there and there, there and there, same thing on the other side, and there and there. And so it's gonna be tied in with everything so I'm not worried about it being a little bit flexible. Um, and it is going to be plenty because I'm not mounting my seat to it or anything. My seat is going to mount to this bar and a bar I'm gonna put right there and then another support back there. So the seat's gonna have its own mounting point so I'm not too worried about uh, the strap still having some flex in it. My feet are gonna sit over there, seat's gonna sit over here. That's just gonna be kind of a filler piece to keep the floor skin in place. Um, <laughs> floor skin. But, um, <laughs> uh, I'm tired. The reason I did the strap steel is because I had the bar come in right here and right there and it was sitting down in kind of that notch between the sensor and the T-case and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get the uh, engine and trans out without, well I wasn't going to be able to get them out because the torsion bar cross member is now hard mounted like, I, like you saw earlier. Um, and so I wasn't going to be able to drop the T case when I was pulling it out and so it was just kind of locked in place. So that's why we did that. Now as we lift the engine and trans out we should be able to slide it forward slightly and the tail of the T case will drop down and then uh, everything should drop and come out like normal. So yeah, long explanation. I test fit the fuel cell a couple of times and I'm just not seeing a good way for it to sit unless it is very offset to the driver's side about where it, it's resting right there. Um, I might end up doing that, but I still only have probably three inches of clearance between the fuel cell and the axle with the fuel cell as high as I can comfortably get it. So I need to decide on that. I'm not 100% sure on if I can make this fuel cell work now with this down bar being in the way right here. So. Trying to decide uh, if we have to, I might have to get a different fuel cell, but for now I'm gonna do what I can to make this fit. And yeah, um, I talked to the guy earlier about rear suspension, so we should be getting some leaf springs soon and making some major headway. Um, I think in the next video, we should probably be having the fuel cell mounted, maybe doing some rear suspension and uh, getting the driver's seat mounted. And yeah, just making progress. I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do. I'm just kind of knocking things out as we can. Um, unfortunately, I am gonna have to put the body on a lot sooner than I had hoped and expected. Not to sneeze. Um, I am gonna have to put the body on a lot sooner than I expected. Because um, I need the body in place to see what will clear and what won't clear. Like we put these uh, little down bars in, which are awesome. Um, but I'm just not sure where the firewall is going to sit now, what I'm going to have to cut and how I'm going to have to modify it for those. And just a lot of stuff. So I think I am going to have to put the body on here in the next video or two and mount it and then just work around it like I did last time. Um, I was hoping to get most of it done without the body on, but I think I'm going to have to just bite the bullet, clean the frame off, paint it, and then drop the body on and just start putting it together and seeing where everything's gonna land. Cause the body will not be removable when we're done. But yeah, so that's a quick little update on it. I've been working hard on it, putting a lot of hours in, and I know this video is short and I'm sorry, but it's slow going, but we're making progress. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to stay hungry, stay humble, stay motivated, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.